Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Hisense RB327N4BWE Frost Free Fridge Freezer. I have to read it off the energy label because some of these model numbers are getting really long now and at my tender age I'm struggling to remember it. Anyway, in this video I'll be showing you this fridge freezer. What I want to do is to show you around the fridge freezer, some of the features and benefits that it offers. But first of all what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop a tape measure across it to show you the dimensions. And first of all the width you're looking at 55 centimetres, or just over 21 and a half inches. The height of it, you're looking, so including the top of the door, because there's a little lip on the door, really a 182 centimetres, or around 71 and a half inches. And the depth of it, so front to back, so to the very back here, if you go into the very front, really looking at uh, 56 centimetres, or around 22 inches. I will show you around the back of the fridge freezer in a moment because it is completely flat, which is always really good. The only thing I would say, just make sure you have a measure of the current or the fridge freezer or more importantly, the space that you've got. There's nothing worse than ordering a fridge freezer or any appliance, getting it into place, then realizing it doesn't fit. What I really like about the fridge freezer is you've got integrated handles within the door. So whether it's the fridge or freezer, it's the same concept for opening the doors. What you'll also find is that you have got the ability to reverse the door if you want to. So at the moment you've got the hinge on the right, that's quite standard on most fridge freezers. But if you do want to reverse it, you've got the full instructions to show you how to do it. It's quite an easy process, but I would recommend doing it before you put any food in, because ideally you do need to lay it on its back, or at least lay it at an angle to do it. You will notice you do get this part in the instructions, and essentially what that is, uh, if you're wondering, that's designed. So on the top here, you've got a piece which you can't see at the moment, that's just covering the top hinge and what this is designed to do is to go on this side if you're reversing the door to cover the hinge on that side. As we delve into the fridge, first of all you'll see that you've actually got three shelves in here, one, two, three, and also you've got a bottle rack as well which is always quite useful. If you didn't want to use that then you can just take it out if you want to and also you've got different shelving positions so if you wanted to take that out and just relocate it a little bit higher up then it's nice that you've got the flexibility. Uh, on the right hand side here you'll see you've got three of the door pockets and also you do get some of the cheeky little egg trays so you get two of those so you can put up to a dozen eggs in the fridge if you want to again i have mentioned it before so if you follow me on youtube for a while a common question i ask should you put eggs in the fridge manufacturers are still putting the egg trays within the fridge uh, i know a lot of people that don't put them in the fridge it's always one of those debates as far as the dimensions on the shelves i just have a quick measure for you. So you're looking at 46 centimetres or around 18 inches wide. And then the depth of the shelf, so 30 centimetres or around 12 inches. I am always pleased to see when a manufacturer puts a large fruit and vegetable box at the bottom. There's nothing worse than having two small ones. And not many manufacturers are doing that now, but it's something I do point out. So if you've got things like long vegetables, things like leeks or celery, then it's always much better to just have one large fruit and vegetable box at the bottom rather than two smaller ones. The control dial for the fridge freezer is just in the middle here, so it's nice and accessible, and it goes from one to seven. And what I'm really pleased to see again is that it's telling you whether it's cold or colder, because some manufacturers, they just have, say, one to seven, but they don't tell you which way around it is, and sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. As we go into the freezer, then as I mentioned earlier, the whole unit is frost free, so you don't have to worry about defrosting it, which for me is always a bonus. It's one of the jobs I really hate, having to defrost a freezer. At the top here, you've got a shelf. So I suppose that's ideal if you've got things like this. So you've got a, an ice cube tray on the top here, uh, but what some manufacturers are doing is to put a shelf at the top now. So you've got a little bit more flexibility with a little bit of extra space. Uh, you're not confined to the area of the drawer, which for some people they like, some others prefer drawers. For the drawers themselves, you'll see here, at the moment it's just got a bit of polythene wrapping on, that's because it's brand new and it's just trying to protect the front of the drawer. Uh, but with these, as far as the dimensions, so the internal dimensions of each drawer, so you're looking at 37 centimetres wide, or 14 and a half inches. And as far as the depth, you're looking at 20, well, 26 and a half centimetres or just under 10 and a half inches. So that's the same for those drawers. So for that and that drawer. And then as you get to the bottom drawer, you will notice that it's a little bit shallower. So it's the same width, but the depth on this one is only 
19 centimeters or around seven and a half inches. I mentioned about the size of the freezer drawers because sometimes if you're purchasing things like frozen meals or even if you've got individual cartons or containers that you want to put in here, then sometimes just knowing the dimensions of each drawer can be quite useful. Just show you the energy label on here. As you can see, it's an E energy rating at 226 kilowatt hours per annum for energy consumption. Also the capacity on here, so you're looking at 85 litres for the freezer and 171 litres for the fridge. And you can see noise level wise, 37 decibels, a C energy rating. So I know some people will look at that and go, well, an E is not that great. Uh, but what you'll find around this price point, which is actually a really good price for what it is. Uh, but yeah, around this price point, uh, if you're comparing to other models, an E is actually pretty good. I did say I'd show you around the back of the fridge freezer. And as you can see, it's completely flat and metal as well, which is always good. Uh, even though it's flat, it is recommended to leave a gap between the back of the fridge freezer and the wall. So I, I know for some people it's tempting to push it all the way back to the wall, but it is recommended to leave a small gap just for air circulation. If you think of purchasing one of these models, I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. Hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Hisense RB327N4BWE Frost Free Fridge Freezer. As I say, I have to read it from the energy label because my memory is not that great to try and remember all of that all in one go without doing a whole load of different takes. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video on that fridge freezer. I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up, click subscribe, leave any comments below. Do always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad about the video. Also, if you've got any questions on it, then I've got this on display at the moment. So if you've got any questions as to anything I've not covered, then just pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Also, if you have got one of these, or if you've got a high sense fridge freezer, let me know what you think about it, because I'd always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching.